is that time of the month again already for my favorites during the month of March. For me, obviously I moved, so <laughs> the month flew by so quickly. I was so sad because I couldn't film a February favorites for you guys, though I did a couple weeks late do a short of my favorites but there's some favorites in there that I just really wanted to talk about in a video so I put them in this month's as well. There actually haven't been many products that launched compared to what I'm usually used to purchasing so it was a chill month and I really got to thoroughly use a lot of products which I think in the end was really really great. So let's get into it. This product that I've been loving is the Tula Mineral Magic Sunscreen. Screen. It is amazing. It feels like a moisturizer. It doesn't leave any sort of white cast on the face. It blends in super fast. I absolutely love this. This is SPF 30. I try to go for something heavier if I know I'm going to be out in the sun. But if I'm staying at home working, I like to use this sunscreen. It's a great pre-makeup sunscreen. So if you don't like the white cast, I hate how sometimes sunscreens, I feel like, don't mix into my face well. This one just blends in super easily, so I've been enjoying this one a lot. Primer. I have been enjoying the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Glow Serum. I like the foundation too. That was very, very full coverage, but I think it's a little finicky, so it's not in this month's favorite. However, I love this. I have mine in the lighter shade Main Squeeze. I think this gives the prettiest glow to the skin. I even will use this if I am not wearing any foundation as well. That's how pretty the glow is. It is a little intense. It's not like a metallic intensity on the skin, but you look super duper glowy. Now, I feel like this is strong enough to show through underneath other foundations, and it also has a hydration factor as well. I believe it is skincare infused, and I can totally, totally tell. So I've been loving this for a glowy primer. If you've been looking for a new glowy primer, this one is really, really great. I've been enjoying it a lot. Foundation. I have not been wearing as heavy a foundation as I used to. I think my skin has has just improved so much that I've been enjoying wearing a lighter coverage. I do, as I say that, I woke up with like two zits down here this morning, but that's hormonal. There's nothing I can do about that. But other than that, my skin's been really great. And then I've been seeing a lot on TikTok that everybody's saying that Shantikai Future Skin Gel Foundation was used on Euphoria, so I've been seeing it a lot. So it reminded me to use this, and dang, do I love this? This was one of my very first foundations. It was definitely my very first high-end foundation when I was like 13. The sales associate recommended this to me because it is great for skin. It doesn't have too much coverage. It's oil-free. Great for young skin, but great for any skin really. It gives a very light coverage. You're not going to get too much, but mm, it looks so beautiful in skin light. It feels a little bit cooling as you apply it to the skin, and it's just the most beautiful light coverage foundation. It evens everything out just so and you still just feel super put together This is one of those foundations where you don't need to accompany it with other makeup If you just put this on without anything else It will just even out your skin and give you a really pretty glow. So I've been enjoying this I am wearing it on my skin today Normally, I wouldn't wear something such like coverage with such heavy eyes But you know, I had to do it for the demo for you guys But I've been enjoying this for every day and I also wanted to talk about this brush You're gonna see me use it in a lot of the demos today for cream products. The Rare Beauty Foundation Brush is the best brush ever for the Chantecai. Because it's so dense, it gives as much coverage as you can possibly get from this foundation. If you use a sponge, the Chantecai foundation is going to disappear. But if you use this Rare Beauty foundation brush it's awesome and i also recommend this for blending out cream products in general on your face if you find that there's a foundation stick a bronzer stick a cheek bronzer a cheek stick anything like that that's a little bit tougher to blend out this will work it out beautifully without taking too much of the coverage or opacity of the product and again because it's so dense it works the product out beautifully and evenly so i'm adding this into my favorites as well this has been an amazing 
amazing tool as I've been using more cream and liquid products. Bronzer, I put this in my uh, most recent short of favorites, but I did want to bring it into this month because I've been using it as well and it's affordable. I love when I can bring you guys a really quality, affordable piece. This is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. Now, please keep in mind this is a bronzer. It's not cool at all. It's not going to contour, but it adds the perfect amount of warmth to the face to make it look like you really hit the sun, you know? Uh, it's super easy to blend out. I blended it out today with the Rare Beauty. It was great. I also like to use it with a sponge, but I think it's such an easy to use, a lightweight product if you just want light coverage on the face. You don't want to put any powders down. This has been great. I've been using it a lot and the best part is the price really does work like a high quality product. I'm so surprised. I love these so much. I have fun ragging on REM Beauty. I'm not going to lie. But these are great. These are the cheek and lipsticks. I have two shades. There's a lot of shades in the range. I believe they're sold out now, but I'm sure they will restock. Audition is my favorite. This is the one that I used today, but there also is Broadway Baby. These are heavily packed with pigment, but man, they are super malleable, very easy to use. I normally like a cheek and lipstick for one or the other. I rarely enjoy a cheek and lipstick for both the cheek and lips. This I think is the only stick that I've enjoyed for both the cheek and lips. Now it is very, very pigmented on the cheek, but like I said, it blends super easily and it's super comfortable and pretty to use as a lipstick. Look at this. It's not too drying, it's not too glossy. I find a lot of sticks like these will make my lips look dry, so they're normally only good for the cheek. This is great as a lipstick too to get that truly monochromatic look. And I've said this about Rare Beauty, it's not that the products are bad, it's just that there's nothing great about the products. There's no reason for you to have to shop online and take a guess on a color and not really see how it looks in person because you can get better in person. This is one of the products in the line that I think actually stands out against the market that makes it worth going the extra mile to purchase online. Really fantastic. Dang, already time to move on to the eyes. If you don't know, I have been obsessed with washes of pastels. We can thank the Natasha Denona pastel palette for that. So with my love of pastels for the spring on the eyes, I've been using this primer a lot. If you are wearing pastels this spring, you need to pick this up. This is the ABH Eye Primer. Now, the reason that this is so special is because it is a white eyeshadow base, but it doesn't make the eyelid patchy at all, considering it's white. It really spreads very easily, and it definitely brightens up the eyelid, making it the perfect base for your pastel shades to become more vibrant. It's not sticky or anything. It's really easy to blend shadows over. This is fantastic. Fantastic. Brought this out from the graveyard. It's been amazing for all of the pastels that I've been playing with. So like I said, if you want the brightness to show through in your pastel shades, get a white base. I highly recommend this one. It helps with longevity as well. So this month, I've also been doing a lot of lazy makeup days. I'm telling you, the Chantecaille foundation has been the culprit for this. So I've been using these Kosas 10 second eyeshadows just for a quick gloss over on the lid. You can use these all alone. They work great. Again, I like the shade Smolder or Blaze all over my lid if I'm not wearing anything else just to give a little shade shimmer and depth to the eye but as you can see like I did today I have a matte base of eyeshadow underneath and then I went in with the shade electric all over my eyelid and it just works perfectly with powder shadows you know nothing weird or gunky happens it works seamlessly with these products but whether alone or paired with other products these eyeshadows last a really long time. They're not going to crease. They don't feel chunky or too heavy on the lid. You can't apply too much. It almost kind of, not. it doesn't dry down like a powder, but it does feel like a powder, but it's not gonna move. It's not gonna budge. These are really, really fantastic. I love the color range here as well. I find it's great just to put a dot on the eyelid and then use your finger to blend out and you're good to go. So these are an awesome literal 10 second eyeshadow solution. This is another older product that I've just been using non-stop. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Rockin' Coal Iconic Liquid Eye Pencil. I personally have the shade Barbrella. 
Barbarella, Barbarella Brown. <laughs> so this is a coal liner, meaning it is going to be really, really soft. You're really able to blend this. So I have it all along my lower lash line today. I even smoked it out a little bit. My waterline, not my lower lash line, but it's really great here. I've been using it though a lot on my upper lash line as well. I love to use this to easily manipulate my eyeliner for every day. I like a brown for every day. And I will just very messily put it along my upper lash shine and then I literally will take my finger and smudge it out. It is a fantastic cold pencil. I'm gonna have to film an everyday makeup tutorial and show you guys how I use this because you will get the most effortless wing with this. It's so easy. I'll have to show you how I do that. It's like amazing. And then mascara. Isom came out with a mascara. I've been loving it. It's Isom the mascara and I'm pretty picky about my mascaras. You guys know I have pretty short thin eyelashes but this gives a really quick and easy boost to my lashes. You can see the length that it's giving me. This is a lot for me. Okay. I find this works better on the first coat or two. After that I kind of like to stop but it does do a lot of impact with those first two swipes which I think is incredible so I've been using this all month I really like it it doesn't flake which is an issue I've been having with certain mascaras so I've been enjoying that as well it's a great one it actually wears a long time so I do recommend looking into this if you're placing an order on Muse Beauty Pro fantastic Oh, eyeshadow palettes, I almost forgot. I mean, I did not try a lot of eyeshadow palettes this month. I'm still debating if I even will do an eyeshadow palette ranking. I'm not sure yet, but there were three eyeshadows that stood out to me. <laughs> so the first one, if you've been following my stories on Instagram or anything, you know I've been like wearing this almost every day. <laughs> this is the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. I've been using the crap out of this, okay? It's just so pretty and fun to play with. And it's not even gonna end up being my most used Natasha Denona palette, but I've just had so much fun with challenging myself to create semi-wearable looks with these pastel tones. And overall, the quality of this in terms of pastel colors is really phenomenal. I've played around with a few different formulations of pastels, and this one is really good because the colors don't wash away as you blend them out. I find with a lot of pastels, shades that as you blend they'll just go away and fade away. These actually hold their opacity on the eyelids so that's what makes them special. It might not seem impressive at first when you first apply them because they aren't the most pigment packed but they're also not going to disappear as you blend. And I've, I've just had fun challenging myself with this color story because the first initial looks that I did I felt like I had a little bit of problems but um, I've overcome that. I've had a lot of fun with this. I recommend it. I don't recommend you pay full price for it but if you can get it on a good discount at like, you know, the Sephora sale or something and you think that you're gonna use these colors, I think this is a great pickup for sure. Um, and then the green on my eye today, this is such a surprise. It's been so long, I feel like, since I've had a ColourPop palette rank in the higher portion of my favorites. This is the ColourPop in the Limelight palette. I had so much fun with this. These are a little bit soft, but you can really build up the opacity. I love the tones of these. I've worn this a couple times this month and I'm just so surprised at how much I've been loving this color story here. I love this brown to neutralize. Right now I'm mostly wearing after party in the crease and then I use layout to neutralize the look but I've done a few really fun looks. They didn't feel too crazy to me. I still felt like they were somewhat wearable. I feel like the greens are really great quality. The shimmers are great quality. It's a palette that did not attract me at all. I just kind of randomly tried it. I almost thought I was going to give this away but I don't know. I ended up really loving it and I'm having a lot of fun with these types of neon green shades so I totally recommend looking into this if you're somewhat interested. I was pleasantly surprised by this palette so ColourPop did a great job with that. And then the last palette. My friend Heather Austin collaborated with Adept Cosmetics. Oh my gosh. Okay. I've never tried Adept Cosmetics before and I had always wanted to and now I see why Heather always talked about them. Their shadows are insane. Some of the most beautiful shimmer shades. This is available for pre-order. Hopefully it is still, but the shimmers in here are so incredible. I just want to bathe in them and put them all over my eyelids. I'm going to let the swatches do the talking here. I was so impressed with this palette. I did a full review on it. I had so much fun. I've been having fun with this palette. Congratulations, Heather. This palette is perfection. 
I love it. So yeah, if you were thinking about getting this, you're on the fence. This is it. It's so beautiful. If you love shimmers, glimmers, duochromes, you will love this. Okay, let's get into the final category, which is lips. The lip liner that I have been using nonstop is the new Hindash Lip Tone Pencil in the shade Hush. It's just a great everyday warm pencil. It's very basic. It's going to go with a lot of different lip colors. I've just had it within reach, so I kept grabbing them. It's super easy to control. It's very similar to a a MAC formulation where it's not super duper creamy, but it's creamy just enough to be able to glide, but you get a ton of control. If you need an extremely precise pencil, this is really, really great for defining the lips because it's not too creamy, so you have so much control when you're outlining the lips, but it's still not too drying of a formula either. I think Hindash really found a happy medium with this, so I've been using it a ton. <laughs> Again, I put this in that short that I did of my favorites last month, but I do want to talk about the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose lip collection. I have a couple colors in my purse, but I don't love the lip glosses as much. So I'm not really counting the lip glosses. It's the lip liners and lipsticks that I'm in love with. So there were three shades that came out in the collection. There was Kala, Peony, and Daphne. My favorite shade is Daphne. Daphne is like the deeper pink color. Kala is going to be the one that's a little bit more peachy. And then Peony is the lightest, lightest pink. So if you're super fair, I would definitely recommend and peony for you. Like I said, I've been enjoying Daphne the most, but I just love how these are a lip system that's made for you. If I know I want a great everyday rose color, I just use the whole Daphne system. The lip liner, this is not even Daphne, the lip liner, the lipstick, and the lip gloss, which I don't have in my hands. I love that Natasha just curated these sets for us, made them super easy and foolproof when it came to picking up a lip, and of course the formulations are spectacular. I love Natasha's lip liner and lipstick formula. Her lipstick is like one of the most creamy lipsticks I've ever used and the lip liner is super solid. They remind me a lot of the Pat McGrath and Charlotte Tilbury lip liners as well. So you can't go wrong with that collection. I would definitely recommend just picking a color, Daphne, and then getting the colors of that and you will have like the perfect everyday lip. And then the final product that I have in today's video are these ColourPop. ColourPop's killing it glowing lip formulation. I did not expect to love these so much, but these are such a comfortable, quick, everyday lip. Put a lip liner down and then put these on over top. They are extremely comfortable. They're kind of like a lipstick and lip balm hybrid. So they give you a little bit of glow, they give you a lot of hydration, and they give a good amount of color. Today, I'm currently wearing the shade Indulge Me, which is a little bit warm. Look at this. See, it gets so much pigment and makes my lips look super hydrated. I've been very impressed with this. I also love the shade Cockatoo, which is a little bit more mauve -y. I've used this one a ton with mauve lip liners. See how there's so many colors in the line? Underrated formula from ColourPop, in my opinion. These are lovely just to throw in your purse because they're super duper thin. And they're just so comfortable on your lips and they're easy to reapply. I think these are a fantastic quick lip product and the best part, they're affordable as well. So there we have it. Those were all of my favorites for the month of March. Let me know down below what were your favorites this month. If I was a little low energy today, you guys, I woke up like just not feeling good. I, I slept with my mouth open last night and I think our AC was a little high. So I woke up and my throat was destroyed. And then that time of the month started, it was like just double whammy. So I have like been like Ugh, all day today. So yeah. I gotta get my energy up because the Sephora Spring Savings event is starting soon, which I'm so excited about. I gotta pull some products together for you guys. So anyways, I'm definitely looking forward to that. My recommendations video will be up very, very soon if it's not already. And that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. And thanks for being subscribed and liking this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.